This is the Foamy Heads. Interesting beverages. What do you have there? Ah, I am drinking a Brute Hero IPA from Revolution Brewery. Brute IPAs. What do you think of those? Uh, no, I'm not a big fan. No? Um, I'm kind of the same. It's kind of like a champagne in mm-hmm. a way. It, I don't... I'm not a big... I'm not fa- I'm not big on it. I'm trying to get the words out of my brain and it's not I'm not being successful with it. It's not my favorite. Well, this is about the time when we normally say what are we drinking and we know we can go That's right true. into it, but <laughs> we've already started. That's right. We uh we started preemptively. Um Well, you need something to start out with. I mean, like it's been a I've my older sister got married this past weekend and I've been very tightly wound for the last couple of days, rehearsal dinner Friday mm. night, wedding on Saturday. So I'm just, I, I need a beer before I could start drinking. <laughs> That's, That's a, you know, <laughs> I I'm like just, it. I'm just trying to, I, I need to get relaxed a little bit. That's a that's definitely a foamy head staple right there. I need a beer before I start drinking. I like that. I'm drinking the Revolution Brewing Lucky Hero uh, Idaho Seven Hop, and this is probably my second Idaho Seven IPA or beer that I've had. And I'm not really a big fan of it. I appreciate the complimentary beer. Yeah. Uh, I'm just Idaho Seven isn't my. They don't do much for me. Idaho mm. Seven hops. They're just kind of like. They're bland. I don't think that they really add much. Now, maybe if you put it in with some other hops, maybe it could potentially work. Uh, but I'm starting to get the feeling that this is a single hop IPA with just Idaho 7, and it's just not really what I'm going for. Nonetheless, hmm. I need a beer you right. know, before I could start, and I'm not going to waste a beer. So <laughs> in this particular instance, it's serving its purpose. Nice. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that one either from Revolution Brewery. It replaced their old citrusy IPA from the previous year, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. And I wasn't a big fan of that one either, but I think it might have been Amarillo Hops last time. Okay. But I'm not 100% on that. Where is Revolution? Chicago based. Oh, are they Chicago? Yeah. Okay. We I think we've talked about them. Uh, we might have talked about them when we were just drinking beer one day, but mm-hmm. I can't remember. Yeah, we had a coffee Eugene, and that I don't think we've released that. Episode Not yet. Yet. So. I remember. I remember that now. That was. We had quite a few beers that day, if <laughs> yeah, I remember. Did. Yeah. <laughs> that coffee Eugene was pretty good, though. If I if I remember, it was good, but it wasn't our favorite because it was. Uh, it was mostly coffee, if I I think. Okay. Because it, it competed with several other heavy hitters. So we'll have to give it another chance mm. when it's like the first one up. Okay. It's one of those things. I've got a couple more cans and maybe we'll do like a coffee specific kind of episode. But the thing that's sticking out most in my mind was when we did the Black Note from Bellsbury. Was this the same day? I don't think so. Okay. I think it was a different one. All right. But it, they're all running together. So <laughs> What happens when you drink beer? That's right. We'll get those episodes out. It'll refresh our memory. And we'll come back to the coffee, Eugene. And especially that, uh, I can't think of the name of the brewing company, but we had their coffee vanilla, or was it vanilla Java Porter, right after the black... Or Blue Note. What was it? Black yeah. Note? Uh, it's a blue bottle. I think it's called Black Note. Black Bell's Note was Brewery. Bell's. Yeah. Yeah. And then the uh, vanilla jo- the vanilla Java Porter. I think so. They changed their label. Atwater. Yeah. Yeah, it was those guys. That was them. Um, That's right. We had that. You're right. We had that the same day we had the Black Note. Yes. I remember that now. Okay. That should be an interesting episode if we decide to release that one because Definitely. we had quite a few heavy hitters that day. Yeah. And uh, I was feeling pretty good. I know that. Definitely. It's another long episode, so it'll be coming out soon. The uh, Oh, this reminds me of the topic that we're going to be talking about today. Yes. Dark Lord Day. <laughs> I'm so excited. Man, the sticker sheet they provided you is pretty rad. They're yeah. using a 8-bit, I think, is their influence yeah this this year is going to be it's kind of more of an 8-bit theme last year was a samurai theme mm. uh this is what they're they're going like their alpha an 8-bit this year yes interesting yes i see their gumball shoe sticker i like that 
I haven't had the beer though. Uh, the character is interesting. It yeah. looks empathetic. Gumball head. Gumball, <laughs> Gumball head. head. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Three Floyds is kind of um, they used to. We used to not be able to find them anywhere. Yeah. And now they kind of started coming in a little bit. They did a, a thirty day test market kind of with other and like Laser Snake came out and oh, liked, um, Gumball like Head came out. You know, they kind of started slowly releasing a little bit just into a small test mm. and. They didn't really say anything. It's just like you walked into a beer store one day and like fucking three Floyds was sitting there and you're like, <laughs> what is going on? So, you know, everybody asked questions. And I was so excited about that Laser Snake when mm-hmm. it came out. Yeah, it's a good IPA. I yes. really like Laser Snake. And, uh, but, and it seemed to do successful. It was very successful in Tennessee, you know, in Nashville specifically. So, uh, and those out those those markets around it so they decided that they were going to start distributing here so we will see three floyds mm. constantly in nashville and the surrounding areas now which i'm really excited about i can't wait for alpha king to hit our shelves alpha king will be a regular too oh, i think cannot wait it's so good <clears throat> i don't know mm. i went to dark lord day last year i don't remember them having any of their ipas any of their yeah. three Floyds because it's at three Floyds in Munster, Indiana. I think they shut down their storefront. Probably. Maybe. I think I read that somewhere. Okay. It's like maybe they open it up for the people attending. Yeah. I don't know. It's definitely, I mean, the entire brewery is closed off to the public that day for sure, <laughs> except nuts. for the people that have tickets. So, I mean, that is true, <clears throat> but they, they do release a whole bunch of their, um, a bunch of their beers, but they're all like the barrel aged bourbon stouts, like the uh, real heavy hitters. So I don't remember any of your regular IPAs or pale ales that you yeah. can find on the shelves at Dark Lord Day. I huh. think it's all just like super heavy hitters. Now you'll see there'll be other breweries, and we'll talk about this, I think, throughout the episode because this seems to be the theme of the episode since Dark Lord Day is in two weeks. <laughs> it's here. But um, <laughs> they all, other breweries that are coming, they kind of bring their best, whatever, and there'll definitely be IPAs and pale ales and all other kinds of beers too. But Three Floyds, oh, yeah. you're going to get nothing but barrel aged, boozy goodness, doubles, oh. triples, and all that, imperial stouts. And I mean, that's why the name is why the Dark name it Lord is Dark Day. Lord Day. So. Mm. It's going to be exciting. I can't wait. It'll be my first one. That's right. This is your first Dark Lord Day. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're taking a bus. Uh, or we're taking an SUV, right? Yeah, There's yeah. going to be four of us? Yep. Yeah. I'm four, super excited. God, four of us for four hours, I guess, is probably what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to take us... Oh, I'm trying to remember how long it took us to get there last year. I want to say the drive's not too bad. Because I think to Chicago, it took about three hours, 30 minutes. Maybe. No, no. I'm thinking no. way. That's way yeah. too short. This is round seven, I think. Yeah, it is seven. Yeah. Nah, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was in Atlanta mode from a couple weeks, but a couple weeks ago. But, I mean, Chicago's not far from Munster. No. You know, we, we, we debated staying at an Airbnb, you know, mm-hmm. kind of around. Munster's not a huge market for that because right. it's a very small town. But Chicago is loaded with Airbnb. So, worst case, Ontario, if we had to stay somewhere, Chicago would not be a bad city. Right. But we ended up scoring. DJ ended up getting us a hotel in Munster, which oh. we're filling up pretty fast. But yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> I, you said, we were quick on the tickets, yeah. <laughs> but slow on the hotel stays. Yes. God. It, it, it makes sense that we should have probably secured it all the second that month became available. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think hotels don't restrict you a bit anyway. Scheduling yeah. like back to back kind of stuff. Right. So. Oh, shit. We're not drinking beer. Oh, what are we drinking? Uh, let's see. Getting the first one out. This is a Wiseacre out of Memphis. So this is the Gertie India Pale Ale, 7.1% alcohol. Um, I think, what, you just want to split it? Yeah, might as well. Uh, Simcoe, Amarillo. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> oh, no, what? A Tannum Hops? Tannum? A-H-T-A-N-U-M. Hold on. A Tannum I'm pulling up the old Google here. Uh, Chinook and Centennial are also in there. So I'm going to open this up real quick. Let's see if we can get a good one. Atanum Hops. Interesting. Let's see here. I got you, Mitch. Thank you. 
Uh, that's a American hop, born and raised, commonly seen in the American ale, pale ale, and lagers. It's a uh, low alpha acid content. Okay. But so, moderate bittering qualities, primarily used for aromatic properties. Aromatic. So low alpha acids. Low AAUs are typically used for um, aromatics, but not used for bittering purposes. So, but I, then again, I don't know because Centennial and Chinook, they're, they're pretty flavorful hops, but they're not super bitter. I don't know. I don't anticipate this being really bitter. No. But I guess we'll find out. Wiseacre doesn't really do us wrong. Well... Hold up. Uh-oh. Hold up on Wiseacre My there. Fault. Uh, anything low alcohol, I hate from Wiseacre. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Uh, that's just how it is right now. <laughs> Something sparked to this. I'm Dude, trying to- so uh, every time we go to Memphis for at my job regularly, and I visited Wiseacre's brewery, or one of their tap houses mm-hmm. anyway, and... If you go anywhere, like a pizza joint or whatever, they'll have Wiseacre, but it's typically their low alcohol range, competing hmm. with like Michelob and all that. Okay. But it's a craft beer, in quote, in my opinion. On it's those. the yingling of, right. of their area, so yes. to speak. Okay. And I hated it. So I had a bad taste for Wiseacre in my mouth until I had their higher alcohol drinks. and. Huh they shine in all of their higher than like 6% ABV beverages. And I don't know why. Why is their low alcohol so bad to me? I I don't know. (laughs) But it's been a while. I've stayed away from them for like three years on the lower alcohol stuff. But anything higher, I'm totally for Wiseacre. So, and what is this one? Well, this one, I mean, it's... From a craft beer standpoint, it's about average. But it is, 7.1. Yeah, 7.1%. I don't think that we're not talking extremely high alcohol, but at the same time, um, beers that you've mentioned <laughs> before have, have had sixes, and they weren't that great either. Only the really <laughs> high stuff is good, apparently. So I'm looking, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you think about this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I haven't heard of Gertie before. This is the first time I've seen it. Their artwork's always... Uh, pleasant to look at too they got a banana dude in sunglasses a sludge unicorn with a melty cat and beer i like it named for the nobel prize winner gertie randit rad radnitz brewed with simcoe amarillo and tannum chinook and centennial hops huh so it's got an average rate okay hold on a second though oh. it has an average four out of five on untapped and that is Typically, and and I have, I don't take issue with untapped ratings, but most times if I'll look at a rating on untapped, if it's around the three to three and a half range, like most people untapped are very, they're a little bit more conservative with their, with their ratings, right? So it's, it's for the masses. It's not necessarily for the true beer snobs. And I think we've talked about this before as compared Mm. to like other beer rating platforms, right? Right. Uh, but most of, when you get up into the fours, like I think at that point on Untapped, every beer that I've seen that's a, around the four mark is is been historically accurate for me for beers that that I've, I've typically rated them around the same. So this will be interesting to see if that holds true. Three point nine two rating is the actual Untapped average right now. Huh. So. Uh, and that's out of that's out of 162 different people that have checked this beer in. Nice. And you know the beer cans already educated me on Gertie. I looked it up. Okay. And uh, Gertie Corey became the third woman and the first American woman to win a Nobel Prize and mm. uh, or Nobel Prize in science. Well, it I, was Nobel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I public education, man. That's right. This thing's got. I'm just gonna say the the foamy head, like it stays. Yes. You know, it doesn't. It dissipated. It dissipated very slowly when we were pouring it. Of course, it was a pretty agitated pour, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it seems to be staying for me anyway. Uh, golden in color, kind of a dark goldish. It smells malty. It does. It has a lot of hop to it, and on my nose. Hmm. But, uh, oh, discovered glucose 1-phosphate, a derivative of glucose, the form in which sugar or glucose is stored in the muscles. Hmm. So, it's, that was a really poor... <laughs> <And> that, <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, 
try to hook the one thing you learned today into. was about somebody with Nobel Peace Prize for discovering glucose. <laughs> well, there's more to it than yeah. that, but I've been drinking. <laughs> We're a beer ahead in on yeah, this, but uh, we've already had one yeah. good, good sized beer. Forgive me, Gertie. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Mitch's glucose levels are getting really high right That's now right. due to the alcohol that That's he's right. in his system. Thanks, Gertie. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna take a sip of Gertie's beer. Let's do this. Whoa. Okay. That's got a bite. Yeah. Does it? You think so? Yeah. At least on my end. It's a kind of doubly bitter than what I was expecting. <clears throat> yeah. So I may have to take a few more sips in. I, I'm coming off of that champagne IPA. This is true. Yeah. So this could be a little harsher to me. Because um, I'm coming off of Idaho 7, which for me is uh, pretty bitter and just not a lot of flavor to it. Mm. So this to me, this one right here is le Gertie is less bitter than Definitely. the one that I had before I was ex I, I wasn't expecting a lot of bitterness just because of you know the the Simcoe and the Chinook and the Centennial all of them are pretty low on the alpha acid unit scale so I wasn't expecting it to be extremely bitter but it, this one seems to be less bitter than even what I was expecting but you're right it could be due to the beers that came that we came from I think I'm tasting a lot of that Amarillo think so in this one that makes sense yeah, I think it's the Amarillo. I, I'm still trying to place my hops, but I kind of remember Amarillo being heavily present. I don't know if that's accurate or not, because it's competing with Simcoe and Centennial. And I'm familiar with the names, but I'm just not 100% on the profiles yet for yeah. either of those, Simcoe or Centennial. But the Amarillo ones I've had have tasted exactly like this. And it's like this multi bitter yeah if that it, makes sense it, no you're yeah. right it's definitely this is a multi bitter beer like mm. there's and we smelled that right when we took the first sip we go oh, oh, yeah. this beer smells malty so i don't think that's wrong is this a uh, is this a four for me i don't no. for me it's not not for me either um <clears throat> where does this sit and so you've been to Wiseacre before, and you went on your rant a few minutes ago about <laughs> right. low alcohol Wiseacre beers. Well, this is way above their average, okay. in my opinion. But it's still going to be low, in my opinion, because it's it's not my favorite from them, mm -hmm. and it's it doesn't hit a home run in my book of an IPA of my favorite tism or whatever yeah yeah i'm probably giving it a three two five that's about what i would put it i would put it at a three two five i was actually thinking i'd probably put it around a three yeah um it's, it's mid-range yeah it's not a bad it's not a bad beer i don't think it's it's for me it's not def it's definitely not deserving of a four no i'm looking at not to i mean to kind of change subjects a little yeah. bit but i'm looking at dark lord day's website mm. uh and wiseacre will be there Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, we don't know. That's the problem, though, is we don't know what beers they're going to be bringing with them. We know that they'll have one beer, and that's it. We don't know which one's going to be. So every brewery that's going to be there will only bring their best beer huh. that has been chosen by three Floyds, or if there's been any sort of contesting to it and they the brewery feels like they need to bring a better one then they will submit that in its place Interesting. but we don't know what beers are going to be offered there but wiseacre will be there with one beer man so we'll have to look out and see which one it is one beer <clears throat> what will they choose and oh. it better not be better get up to get down i want something new <laughs> no <laughs> I can I can say from Dark Lord Day last year when I went I didn't recognize any of the beers oh, from any of the breweries nice. like a lot of these breweries will brew a beer specifically for Dark Lord Day like they won't it'll be beers that you will not be able to check in anywhere else you won't be able to find anywhere else because they're brewing it specifically for Dark Lord Day okay so they've they've brewed it maybe in the past in small batches. Uh, and somebody got a hold of it and said, this beer's phenomenal, and they're going to brew it again for Dark Lord Day. Interesting. Um, or maybe it's just something that's local, just to Memphis, that they brewed a few batches of. Mm. But typically, it's never been one that I've seen before. Man. Huh. 
I'm you're going to be drunk. Yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. Yes. <laughs> not your money back either. <laughs> no. Nope. your own damn fault if yeah. you're drunk by the end of it. That's right. <laughs> man, I'm excited, man. I... It's going to be fun. Yeah. I, I love all the things Three Floyds so far. Mm-hmm. Including their logo. A fucking bat with a skull on it with a crown. Their artwork is solid. Yeah. They they put a lot of they put a lot of time into their artwork, into their can art. Mm. You know, and that shows through the 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 beer as well. It just shows how intricate they are with their brewing process. Definitely. So I, ah, I'm so excited to see it. We're going up Thursday or Friday. Is it Friday? Friday, I guess. I don't know. It starts Saturday. I guess we haven't really talked about it yet. Yeah. But when are we renting the car? We, <clears> we have the we have the car Friday, Saturday, and then we'll return it on Sunday. So we'll definitely be heading out on Friday. We just got to figure out the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, we, we, we figure things out in steps. Right. <laughs> we're men. I don't think we're really... But we're, we're men who drink too much beer. We really don't yeah. plan everything out in advance. Let's drink on this idea. That's right. <laughs> But there will be four of us. That's right. And we're we're sharing a van to go up there, and we're going to stay in the hotel. Mm. Uh, that'll be on Friday. Dark Lord Day will be all day Saturday. Um, and then we'll go back to the hotel. And last year when we did it, we just, as soon as we got back, mm. we just popped open beers because we made a couple stops along the way at beer stores and stuff like that. That yeah. DJ, who's very familiar with that route because he's been a couple of times, has some really good places that we stop on the way up to Munster. We pick up mixed six packs and stuff like that, and we just bring a bunch of beer to the hotel. Awesome. So we'll drink Friday night before we go to sleep, and then when we get back Saturday, we'll pop open a bunch of beers and have beer shares between the four of us. Nice. So it'll be a good time. What a what a cigars thoughts or thoughts on cigars with the group that we're you know up with. I didn't bring any last year. But I remember thinking I should have brought some. Mm. So uh, that'll definitely be on the list this year. I think cigars will be good, especially if we're having a bunch of those dark beers. Yeah. Cigars will taste really good. I've still got some over a year old undercrowns and whatnot that have been aging. Okay. So I'll probably pack several. And between you and me, we'll be able to distribute some cigars if anyone's interested. Okay. I'm curious what... uh, where we'll be able to set up and have a cigar and a beverage. That'll be nice. Well, they, you know, the, the hotel we're staying at is going to be like a Hampton Inn of sorts. Yeah. You know, and, and they always have some sort of a, just an outside mm. patio area. And when DJ and I were there last year, we just sat out there. There were a couple of tables, some comfortable chairs. Oh, cool. And we just each kind of came out of our room. We brought a couple of bottles of beer with us each. Mm. And we just sat outside and we just opened them and we just split them. Awesome. So we sat outside in the nice weather for probably two hours and we just drank beer and talked about it. So it's going to be a good good time. Yeah. Uh, Heck yes. Dark Lord's going to be so good. I cannot wait. I'm about ready for a rinse. What yep, are you? I think so too. All right. We'll be right back. We're back. Yes, we are. We had to rinse the beer glasses. <laughs> we don't like flavor transfer around here. Yeah, not too partial to it. This one should be interesting, though. I'm just going to go ahead and start talking about it. Um, Space Lettuce from Monday Night Brewing. I am oh, a Monday Night. Yeah. I am a huge Monday Night Brewing fan. Everything I've had from them, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> most everything I've had from them has been phenomenal and the other the rest have been good i don't i don't think i've had a bad monday night brewing Mm. yet i haven't had a lot from them but i've had probably six or seven of their ipas and they've all been really good to me and i like this one because a it's an imperial ipa but this is supposed to be i i think it's kind of playing off of the whole sticky danky kind Um, of ipa because it's called space lettuce so i think mm -hmm. they're kind of you know they're they're throwing some um uh some simcoe hops in there but it's supposed to be kind of like a sticky intergalactic 
style IPA. Actually, that's what it says on the side. Heady, sticky, intergalactic IPA. Interesting. So I'm very interested in trying this out. I did stay away from one of their beers recently. Which one? Do you Han remember? Brolo. Is that their... I think it's their Brute, right? Or am I just... Uh, Let me see. They had a golden... No, that oh, was Oh, that I'm was just a, a pale ale. Oh. Han Brolo? Yeah, there was another Han something joke beer like okay. name like that on a play on star wars yeah but it was a brute ipa brute ipa of, uh it wasn't them my bad monday so it wasn't night. oh it wasn't monday night is what no. you're saying oh okay but it was along the same lines as han brolo it, gotcha uh, now it's gonna bother me for the next week until i figure out who it was i saw dang it the problem with a lot of these breweries is they're they're coming out with so many beers so fast the names are starting to kind of merge together. Yeah, and for a person are. drinking beer, that's never a good thing. <laughs> that's right. But hey, plenty to talk about, I guess. Every can they have uses the tie. Yeah, like a a, a, a suit tie. Yeah, it's like a Monday night Monday night after a, a heavy day's work, you go to the bar. Yeah, is kind of I think what they're getting at. So, let's see what we got here. Slushy fun, cherry lime gose. Ooh, this smells really good, Mitch. Oh. Whoa, they got a few things on here that look cool. I'm on their website. Let me see your glass. Thank you. This has a good pour to it. I was reading online um, about how to pour beer, and they say, like, you know, intentionally you're supposed to for beers like this you're supposed to agitate them so a lot of people when they're pouring a beer down the side they try to avoid you know the, the a lot of foam and a lot of agitation where as in you know craft beers like especially coming out of a can like it's supposed to be agitated you're supposed to kind of mix everything up so i've been i've been pouring my beers a little bit more aggressively lately uh to see if it if, if it changes the flavor or if it, you know anything i haven't really experienced anything yet but mm. um it requires it requires me to wait a little bit longer before I start drinking because I have to let the foamy head dissipate. Right. So. Well, that I, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was supposed to be agitated from a can. So that's good to know. That smells phenomenal. Oh, man, it's uh, it's heavy. <laughs> okay, you ready for this? Yeah. Eight point one percent ABV. Mm-hmm. So we're in for a good ride. One hundred IBUs. <laughs> of course. <laughs> this should be really good. A spacecraft. I'm just reading directly their description, yeah. right? A spacecrafted double IPA, dry hop three times, oh. resulting in a cosmically aligned hop encounter. Which hops? Glad you asked. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Citra, Mosaic, Mosaic, Simcoe, Mandarina, Simcoe. Again, I guess that's where the dry hop comes in, uh. and Equinot hops. So there's there's five different kinds of hops. Some of them are hopped multiple times in this beer. Uh, finishing wow. off with uh, two row malt, which is which is standard. Mm. Uh, Pilsen hops and Munich malts, or Pilsen malt and Munich malt. So I think this is going to be a great beer. It smells strong. Right. Hundred IBUs. You, it's hard to it's hard to hide a hundred IBUs. Yeah, that's true. It, this the smell makes sense now. Your your foamy head dissipated a little bit before mine. I'm still going. I have to wait. I'll let you take the first sip if you want. Yeah, I'll do this. The uh, I guess the second pour was it's just less aggressive. I guess out mm-hmm. of the can. I don't Color's know. nice too. Yeah, it's got a little haze to it. Yeah, it looks like a typical IPA, but it's got it's got this golden. It's got a nice golden color. It's kind of appealing. Very and man, it, look at that. The legs are staying. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which makes sense too. 100 IBU, I guess. Take a sip. Yeah. I want to see what this is like. God, that smells strong. Let's do this. Oh, that's good. Uh, that that drinks really well. That is very good. Yeah. It's very fresh. It tastes very fresh. Mm. Very green, so to speak. Good mouthfeel to it at mm-hmm. the back. It's got some creamy notes to it, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's 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 not like lactose creamy, but it's no. more like it's just soft. It is. It's very soft. I think that's what I like about the mouthfeel too. It's just uh, you know, it 
I, I don't get anything off the front, but it, it, at the back, it's a nice, softy, kind of breezy, creamy. You're right. Everything's IBU. on the finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The front goes away quick. Yeah. There's no nothing punching you right away. But the lingering kind of taste is what's the marvel here. That drinks real yeah. easy. That's very... <laughs> you could get in trouble with Shoot. this beer. Yeah. You'd be two down before. <laughs> This would be awesome. Damn. So I'm looking at they have uh, they have other variants of this beer, and I'm not really sure what that means, but um, <clears throat> they have some other beer variants. I'm looking on on tap. They have uh, breakfast in space, which is a uh, cask IPA, a cask ale, mm. uh, intergalactic herb garden, which is another imperial. Um, <clears throat> Gosh, all of these. They've got quite a few different variants of space lettuce. So I guess they're they're all kind of playing on it's a space IPA is what they're they're creating this round because they have breakfast in space, the intergalactic herb garden. They're all very similar to this style of beer, but they're just slightly tweaked a little bit. Huh. Um so they're kind of coming out with different names, but it looks like these are only available like at their tap room. Ah. Uh, oh so well. I don't think we'll be able to get those. Man, this is good. It's very good. It was super surprising. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect this. I expected a really good beer just simply because I like Monday Night Brewing. Mm. Uh, but I didn't know what to expect. I didn't look up the specs or anything on this before we started drinking it. Like, I didn't know the IBU. Uh, I only knew it was an Imperial IPA, so I knew it was going to be fairly higher in alcohol. But that's it. Gosh. Yeah, they got quite a few cool looking choices on their site right now. Are you on their website? I am. They've got the Space Lettuce Luxuriously Smooth Double IPA. Hey. That's what they say. Luxuriously Smooth. Brewed with a plethora of blah, 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 blah. That sends me to the product page. <clears throat> and uh, they have this. I'm not a big fan of, uh, is it Brit Brit Britannicides? Hold on. I got to find the word again. It's been forever since I had a sour beer and talked about it. Okay. But they have a Brevis and like Brute Head or whatever. And it, it's a, you know, the play on Beavis and Butt Head. Gotcha. It looks yeah. cool. And I, w I would love to get reintroduced to that again through that one. But they age it with that. Brevis and Brett Head. Yes. That's what it was. Brett Head. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. You know, I like Monday. So I'm from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously they weren't around when I was living in Atlanta. I was 10 years old at the time. So that would have been. 30 years ago, <laughs> 24 years ago. Uh, so I I, I, I want to make a trip yeah. to Atlanta because we've we've talked about a couple of other things. So like we want to go see Killer Mike's. Uh, oh, you the know, barber we, shop. We yeah. want to go to his barber shop. Uh, we want to go. I think we want to hit up Steve West if he's in the area. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> I think Monday Night Brewing needs to be on our list of places to go. Yeah. They, there's a... I'm not a big fan of their beers, but the Laughing Skull has their own burger and beer joint. Okay. There's two of them. There's one in Little Five Points, and then there's the downtown location. The Five Points is where it's at. Um, you said they have some very funky artwork there. And so like, Well, their downtown not, one has a giant wooden phallic <laughs> statue, and uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, just standing around it, you know. You typically, your wait time is a uh, decent length there as well as their statue is as well it's a uh, formidable <laughs> <laughs> and i waited right next to it the whole time nice so <laughs> i think it was like made out of walnut standing next to a yeah. big phallic statue for two hours <laughs> yeah it took a while i was surprised and of course the the local people that are there they're like what are you waiting in line for as you walk by they they'll heckle you from time to time nice but, if that's if you're outside and we had to be for a while mm -hmm. but uh the five points i've never had to really wait for it uh but it was kind of towards the evening at the time not afternoon it's packed in the afternoon and parking's a bitch mm. it's hard to find anything not paid and fr you know free but parallel parking everything's taken practically it's and a busy part of atlanta it is and you gotta watch out where you park too yep that part it's Atlanta. Persistent. Yes. <laughs> it's Atlanta. So, you know, it, Five Points is a cool little area in Atlanta. I'd love to visit again when we go down. Um, we need to pick out several other breweries to hit up 
Because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that that would be a fun trip. It'd be great to see Steve. If he's got time, we'll do some photo sessions after we get our hair trimmed at the shop. That works. That'd be good. I'm really excited about that. Because Atlanta's, because Atlanta's grown so much since I've left, mm-hmm. you know, and there's all these places, like there's breweries in Atlanta now, there's breweries popping up everywhere. Yes. But not only that, when you're a little kid and you don't really have a lot of, you don't have an expanded view of what's going on in your area, right? You don't appreciate what you have around you because right. you go to school, you walk home, you do homework, you play outside and that's it. And then you move out of that location, you go somewhere else and then you start watching like you get on Netflix and then you see like, you know, like run the jewels is kind of a favorite thing between, you know, killer Mike's based out of Atlanta. And then you go, Oh, it'd be fun to go to Atlanta. And then you have a beer from a new brewery that you've never tried before. And you find out there in Atlanta, it's like, where were all these guys when we weren't there? (laughs) Obviously they weren't right. But the nostalgia feeling of going back to your hometown and seeing how it's grown Mm -hmm. over the years. So I think, I think an Atlanta trip is definitely definitely something that we need to do. Yeah, we gotta get down there. It's right next door, practically. And we'll find four hour drive. Yeah, it's not bad it. at all. And we'll go to. Um, we'll definitely. I think we should hit up Monday Night Brewing. Let's. We'll put together a list of the breweries that we want to go visit because they're not the only ones down there. Right. Man, that would be a fun trip. I I can't wait for that. Mm-hmm. I've gotten about halfway through my be- beverage. What do you think so far? I really like it. Um, it's I, I think you nailed it when you said that there is nothing on the front. Mm-hmm. I think that's changing just a tiny bit as it warms up, but yeah. it's nothing that sticks out to me. Like when I take the sip, there's nothing on the front that makes me go, oh, that tastes like this. Right. You know, when it was really cold, there was definitely nothing on the front and it just all shows up on the on the tail end of the sip. Mm-hmm. As it warms, I think that it's starting to come through a little bit. There's a little bit more up front, but still nothing that I can pick up on. Uh but that ending, man, the last part of that of that taste is is definitely where all the flavor is. I think it's kind of a very I hate to use the term lettuce, but the name is the name is <laughs> yeah. aptly fitting, I think, because it's kind of a fresh, like tropical. F- um, it's not earthy, right? It's, no, a, it's very all. fresh tasting to me. Mm-hmm. Like if you're walking through, this is going to be stupid, but if you're walking through a grocery store and you see like the, you know, all the heads of lettuce and all the vegetables ever, and all of a sudden like the sprinklers turn on and you can ah. just see the mist kind of coming down. Yeah. If you were to put that into what you think a taste would be Mm. that's kind of how this is this comes across to me it's definitely a miss to my taste buds when i drink it Mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's it has that fresh is the word for it fresh yeah yeah it's yeah Uh, uh, this is much better pick something else out of it but that's it yeah i like it it smells great it smells great it smells fresh it tastes fresh um it's got a pretty good viscosity to it. Like you're spinning your glass around right mm. now and, and the, the legs are just kind of staying on the side of the glass. It's definitely not a thin right. tasting beer. Uh, the eight, the 8% I'd say is hidden pretty well, but it's, it's not overly boozy. No. Um, the booziness is just a hint. Just a little end. bit. It's a, it just like reminds you. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm here. Yeah. I've had other beers with lower alcohol that don't hide it very well at all. And I've had other beers with uh, lower IBUs that don't taste as bitter as this. Huh. So, um, and I've had beers with lower IBUs that taste even more bitter than this at the same time. <laughs> I think this is, a, this is right in my wheelhouse. Man. Yeah. I'm going to, out of five, I'm going to give it a solid four. Yep. For me. That's exactly what I was thinking. This is a beer I will definitely have again. Yes. And I'm going to put it on my radar to get it if I see it. Mm-hmm. The problem with these beers is I don't know how often they make them because right, yes. you see these singles, a lot of these breweries are getting into the whole make a beer once. And, and I mm-hmm. appreciate and I enjoy that. But when I find something that I really like, I want to drink lots of it. But by the time I go back there, I can't find it anymore. Yeah. Out till the next year or when they decide to make it again or if yeah. ever. So that was very good. That was awesome. Thanks for the beers. Absolutely. Uh, I guess that's going to do it, huh? Yeah, I think so. I think we're done for the day. Thanks for joining us, everyone.